Hello Guardians, you need to run a Nightfall for Truth. You may need to run three of them, depending on how the order of what you're doing these things. Um, but honestly, what you need to do is you need to run a Nightfall to get one of the map fragments. So when you go through the decoding, um, basically what you need to do is go through and remember you have to do fight alongside the Chosen as Nightfall. So one of the map pieces you actually need to get to drop by finishing a nightfall but if you've de done the other ones first you need to complete a nightfall with at least a power cap of 100. you can also get rocket launcher kills while you do it or honestly if you're just going for the completion um i would might do the completions and the rocket kills separately depending on if you're running with a team or not if you're running with a team it's not so hard to stay alive if you're Running by yourself, I'd probably set up a build for more completion sake and then go back and kind of redo the start of one or two of these strikes, depending on what week it is, um, and then kind of get your rocket launcher kills. Like, go to a rally flag, load up on Wardcliffe Coil, start out a strike, kill as much as you can. If you die, no big deal. Go back, hit a rally flag, do it, do it as many times as it takes. It's going to be kind of the way you do it as a solo player, uh, but hit a rally flag anytime you go into a nightfall. It's a good thing. But if you are going for the 100 handicap, all that's going to do is take me from, say, 7.30 down to 6.30. It's really not that bad. You should still be plenty over-leveled. The other piece to remember, you don't need any, like, debuffs on there. So only put buffs on there that make it easier for you. I'm going to run Heavyweight and Arc Singe on this strike specifically because Arc Singe helps, it's out. helps it out. Now, on this week, it's the week of the 11th of June. So these are the strikes we've got. Ward of Nothing, Pyramidian, Hollowed Lair. Hollowed Lair I do not like to try and finish solo just because there's so many immunity phases and so many enemies. I've done it, but it's not one I would advise just to go try. Pyramidium is one, if you do it by yourself, and I show you guys kind of all the steps in the boss room, it's really not too bad, and if you get him to a pretty good amount of damage, you should probably be able to burn him with heavyweight fairly quickly. And then, finally, we've got Word of Nothing. Also not, it's actually a really easy boss to kill. Set up a rally barricade, uh, something like Prospector, you can dump damage on him. 21% Delirium is pretty good. Those types of things are good. The hard part about the Warden of Nothing Strike is the Prison of Elders, like that old section where you have the, the you have to hit the mines. That's probably the hardest section in there. If you have a decent amount of heavy ammo, you're in pretty good shape, but it still can be a bit dicey. You don't have to do match game. Now, match game of Warden of Nothing is rough. I've done it, but it's not the most fun. Uh, but it's not so bad as long as you just got heavyweight on. But the easiest one for me would be the Pyramid in this week. And if you guys want to know next week, tune into my weekly reset. And of course, I'll let you guys have a couple pointers and tips on the Nightfalls. Um, so if you haven't followed me yet, hit that subscribe button. And those weekly resets hopefully will help you guys out if you're catching this at a later time. Go and check out the weekly reset video of the week. I'm going to give you guys a few pointers for your Nightfalls. But the Pyramidian, hit your rally flag before so you are set up. This is an Arc Singe week. Uh, Arc Singe, if you're not running match game, Borealis isn't exactly necessary on this one. Something with Void is just mostly what I would advise. Just Borealis, I wanted a sniper and I was moving stuff around and it's pretty much just what I've got at the moment. So any Void sniper would be good. Um, something like Fate Cries Foul is going to probably have a little more impact than Persuader. So it's really up to you and a preference there. But I would probably bring a Void sniper because you're going to have um, Minotaurs. Potentially you're going to have some Acolytes and stuff that you need to break shields on. So you are going to need Void in this strike. You're not going to need much solar. There's a few knights, and that's just kind of where it gets dicey for what you bring with you. Um, I've got Borealis, so I've got that covered. But say if you don't have 21% Delirium, you've just got Thunderlord, you may want to bring something along the lines of, you know, a solar subclass, or you're just going to have to try and skip the knights. But if match game isn't on, it's really not going to be as big of a deal. So even Thunderlord should still be able to get through those few solar shields. And then anything even like Subtle Calamity, a Void Sniper, Subtle Calamity is the Void Bow. Um, those will all be a decent option as well. I like both of those because they're ranged and they've got a decent amount of ammo. So that's kind of my build. I'm going Arc though just for quick clearing for a couple purposes. We'll see. But other than that, any reserves you got for a machine gun are a good thing if that's what you're running in heavy. We've got like 400 and some odd bullets in this thing, so it's great. And anything else you got is good. So... Let's go ahead and jump into the Pyramidian. Again, this is a completion run. Uh, safe, not going for points, not going for anything crazy. Literally just completion. So this will check your Nightfall of the Week. This won't check your 100k Nightfall of the Week. Here we go. Alright, so as I said, we're doing this for completion's sake. Not for speed or high score or anything like that. So this will be a 
slower, more, um, how do I call this, safe run. So I'll take everything a little bit slower, but hopefully this will help you guys survive depending on what you're facing. So again, as you're going through, your delirium is going to be really powerful on some of these guys just because heavyweight and arc singe is just all sorts of a strong combo. And don't forget about this upper deck. It's a really good way to be able to fight some of these guys and stay safe because some of them are actually probably going to hurt. Now, I'll do one of these sides at a time. So say I'll jump over here. I don't need arc singe right now. I'll go ahead and put it on arc. And then in the middle of the strike is usually when you're going to want the void. If you got Void in the middle, you're still fine. So once these spawn, if you really worry about, like, surviving, you can jump up here and get up and out of the way. That's kind of your best way to do this. If you really are worried about dying, me, usually I'll stay a little bit farther down in the mix, but I can show you guys a way to just enjoy things a little bit. And you can pick these far guys off. Pop the shields. Find these two. Snipey boy. He teleported. Well, he'll just have to take a shot in the face there. And those guys are still a little far. And again, this is like, this is how I'd play it cautiously. I still didn't switch my jump, so I'm not going to be on the right jump. But what are you going to do? Where'd he go? He's under me, isn't he? Hi! Alright, now to hit the other side. Would be nice to see some heavy ammo drop, but that doesn't always happen. No, I switched to void. I do like this new ornament for Borealis. Big time digging this one. I'll see if you need another safe place to hide on this initial part of the strike. Behind this rock works pretty well. You'll have these two that spawn in the center. Watch those two guys over there. They've got some range on their cannons. One more guy is going to be down in the middle. Now you're going to have a lot of adds that spawn in the middle. So if you can get a grenade down there, that might not actually be a bad thing. But watch out for your two over here. Those are your majors. Oh, apparently I had a bounty. Now, the big harpies, you're going to want something powerful for them. They're going to go quick. Find the other big harpy and you'll be in decent shape. It's just so much easier to burn those guys down. Now, the regular goblins I'll kill with normal and hopefully the joys of juggler will be in effect. I really wish that wasn't actually a thing, but it's a thing. If you're running out of ammo or if you're using your heavy weapon a lot and you kill a lot of things, switch what gun you're using and you have a somewhat of a higher tendency. Can't say it's confirmed by any stretch, but it does seem to be like, hey, I'm almost out of ammo. I switch weapons, kill one thing, and I get like all the ammo for the one gun I was using. Happens sometimes. What are you going to do? See, a normal strike run, but again, safety strike run. But yeah, match game is not on, so the shields aren't going to be quite as terrible, which is a good thing. Uh, but there's some that it is a little nicer to have the right thing for. So Void's typically what I would have in the middle. We might have a couple solar shields, but we don't actually have Taken here, so we're going to be facing just Vex. Sometimes there's the Taken guys. And what do you know? Got some more heavy. I always hate heavy dropping up at the top here, because I can't do any... It's not like I can put it in my backpack and take it with me. It's just chilling there. So you're going to have some Vex, I think, that spawn down below. I always forget if these are Minotaurs. I don't normally get the Vex here. Oh yeah, they're Minotaurs, so we'll go to Void, and if you got your Void normal, then you should be in good shape here anyway. It's what you ought to be running as Void, really. They're not so bad, just don't let them get you too much. And again, something like Delirium has its benefits, obviously, so if I stay away from that heavy, but I can come down here, I know I, gotta get, I, know I got another shield. Or if I'm just really rolling in heavy ammo, I can be kind of aggressive with it. Never know how the drops are going to go. Oh, apparently I'm not done. Yep, there's your big boy. So having void is a good thing. Also being able to snipe is a good thing too. So they're going to throw the heavy at me this time. I promise you other runs or many other times, it doesn't drop like this. So if it's not dropping for you, don't feel bad. That's like me every other time than this one. Just kind of getting lucky at the moment. Hopefully I don't die. That would also be a good thing. Now you can have Taken in this area. And you'll know if you have the Taken guys up at the top. You'll have a um, Phalanx sitting right there. Again, always kill these guys. 
Now, if I die from these beams because I have the wrong jump on, I'm going to be really annoyed, but we'll find out. So this one's always a little interesting. I always kind of barely get off the ledge and then push forward just to kind of fall forward as I go. All right. So, depending on what's going on up here, you may or may not have ads up here with you. You're going to have the Arc Harpies up there. You're going to have some enemies down below. Grenades work pretty well for some of this stuff. And start picking whatever you can off from back here from cover. It's going to make your life easier most of the time. Plenty of ads up here, though. Nothing too crazy on this one. I love my go figure, because when Rampage kicks in, it's a beast. Literally Rampage. Basic stuff here. Now, if you have the Taken, you're going to have Acolytes that have Void Shields. You're going to have Captains, which are also very fun. Now, the Captains are annoying because they've got Solar Shields. These guys aren't so bad if they're void. And if you have a bad run on this one, maybe you just restart the strike. I've done that too. Go till you get an optimal run. Now it's not the easiest thing to run rerun this opening section like quickly, but it is one of those if you're going for a completion and you just like you're like, I have taken, the build I have does not work for taken. Well, try it again in another roll. Might actually work. Like that Minotaur up there. He's a little easier to take out because he's void. And if anybody gets aggressive, you can pull pretty far back, actually. Don't forget about that. You also, once you get to this area, will be able to hit these guys from the back. Those guys we'll get to in a minute. So I do like the Vex in this section a little more, just because they're a bit more manageable. Um, and you don't really need anything besides Void and Arc in this one. If you have the Taken, it gets a bit dicier with what you have to bring and account for. Just lots of ads. Okay, don't forget about these harpies up top. Because then you're going to have a whole bunch of them up here. Now these should all have arc shields. So if you get all the shields to break, it goes really well. Sometimes there's two phases. Sometimes there's not. This one's actually like... I'm getting like half the spawns I feel like I normally do. So if you're like, I have double the enemies, I totally understand. If you have taken, it definitely feels like there's noticeably more. really don't want to die to the lasers, but at least if you die in the lasers in this section, your respawn point is not so far back. If you don't make it through pretty much what I just got went through, you almost get to go to the top of the kind of the descent down into the Pyramidium. Gets to be a big bummer. Now, usually when I walk up, this thing will spawn, kind of glitch, wait for it to actually spawn, and then fall. If you time it that way, you should be fairly safe. Kind of the point I want the Vex to turn around. So I can actually hit these guys in their little uh, crit spot. But until they do, they are a bit on the annoying side. This guy here. Hit him where it counts. There we go. He's dead. Now we've got all the fun scions out here. Now you're probably going to have taken here no matter what you do. I probably don't need that ammo yet. But I would work on trying to take out the scions as quick as possible. Now, I am probably also going to have a captain on the other side, so keep that in mind. I try and take out all these guys first so they don't keep splitting, because my goodness do I hate taking. Now, you're going to have a guy over on the left. A couple goblins, you're going to want to kill those. So yeah, if I get aggressive anywhere, I wouldn't push too far up, because you do get more enemies to spawn as soon as you do. But back here, you should be all right. Now, just for reference of burning through a shield that doesn't match your heavy. Not that one. Wait for the big black ball of doom. We're talking about the captain now. You're still going to kill him quick. You just have to burn a few extra on the shield. So I typically come over here to this side first. Easiest platform to take care of. And while you're doing it, watch for those. There's usually a box right here. You can use that to kill quite a few. And also, that'll actually break the captain if you're dealing with them here. Got some heavy to drop, which is nice. Lots of goblin spawning. So once one of the altars is done, typically what I'll do is come to the back and reset everything way in the back. Now, you're going to have some centurions. They go down quickly, obviously. When you have a heavyweight, 
And Delirium or Thunderlord. All those guys go down fast. Taking Goblins could probably not be more annoying with their shield, so... Find them, hunt them down, kill them as quickly as possible. So they don't chain their shields. Try and find all the Scions so they stop. I do have more heavy, that's why I came back to get that one. And... Now that Captain again. Want to make sure you get burn him quick. Match game is not on, so not as big of a deal. Should have one more up top. There you are. All goblins need to die because their shields are annoying. <laughs> Round two again. Wait for things to spawn. This time you'll have a few bigger guys. As I do have the Taken, it's going to be a similar group. More Centurions, maybe with some Captains. If you're on a different version, you're going to be dealing with the big Hydra in the back. So again, he's pretty easy to take out just because he's arc shielded. And then trying to find your Captains. If you have the other run, watch out for the uh, hobgoblins on the outside. They'll be sniping from back there and over there in the corner. So just be aware of what's going on around you. Now this one, as soon as you actually pop this third one, be ready to run through the wall as quick as you can. This one right here. It will go away. As soon as it does, you... I don't remember if this is the one where the enemies spawn or not. If you have enemies, doesn't matter. Just run as fast as you can to get through here. Just skip them all. Try not to get trampled. And if anybody comes through, just make sure you don't get tagged. So, let's see here. I usually will do this one. I'll slide under here. And then I'll actually fight most of this room from back here. So, you got this guy in the back, the wizard. You can pop that shield. Take it out. Watch for the goblins. Like, you can sit here all day if you're worried about it. It's kind of annoying if you're worried about, like, killing all these enemies and then dying. But it's really not that big of a deal. Because on this one, usually what I'll do is wait for it to bounce off the floor when they separate. Easy run through. Alright, so these, just be cautious right as it gets to it. Cross it. Don't get too close to this guy. Otherwise, he will boop you right back into those laser walls, and that will definitely kill you. Despite all your hopes and dreams, he will kick your butt. Alright, so this next section, you are going to always watch the upper, upper deck for snipers, and you're going to have a lot of arc... Uh, Likely going to have a lot of void shields here. So, usually a grenade up there is a good thing to start. Back up enough so you have the upper deck shot on the two hobgoblins. Duck down so they don't take you out. Watch out for the fire. And then look for these guys and burn them quick. Now the big wanted guy, he's not required. So if you don't feel like killing him, just focus on any other enemy in the area and you'll probably be fine. If you want to kill the big guy, I just wouldn't advise it because he's just going to waste your ammo more than anything. And bounties are dropping left and right. Yeah, big boy in the back, he's not worth your effort. You're going to have some ads down below. Watch how much of your sniper you actually use because you're probably going to burn through that ammo. Now, if you creep forward far enough, you're going to get the guys in the front to spawn. But if you don't go too far... You won't have all of them spawn. But if you're working on any type of energy shielded enemy, you're going to need to burn some heavy. It's just quicker. Now that's one reason why I do like a machine gun. It's got so much ammo. Just check your spawns underneath and the closer you get, the better off. But I wouldn't go too far forward. And this is one where popping the shield is actually going to work better because it will kill him anyway. So make sure you hit these uh, towers before you go too far. I've been all the way up at the front and had to come back. You're not doing any of this for time. It's more just uh, annoyance sake. So that was a nice double chain. I know I missed one of them. There we go. And again, trying to take out everything you can. Those taken phalanx are also nice to drop. Got something. Now, whenever you creep right up about to here, you're going to get your next set of adds to spawn. Hit the snipers first. And then if you're really concerned, just pull back a little bit. My god, this jump. Ugh. I live on strafe jump, so if you're wondering why I'm annoyed, I'm on the wrong jump. Now, there's a Minotaur up there. I know he's kind of hard to see, but he's there. Same on the other side. I would try and hit those guys first. That's, again, why a sniper or a bow is a good thing. Try and find your kind of cloaky predator-looking guy. Tag him in the noggin. That's a technical term, guy. Predator-looking guy in the noggin. Same thing here. Farther you are away, 
They can't do anything to you, so look for all those funny-looking guys. And life gets a little easier when the Minotaurs aren't in here. Goblins, not so bad. So this is not the fastest run. We're already at 15 minutes, as you can tell. But you are still alive, so that's a thing. All right, so for the towers that you need to hit, I've got one more over there. Where is the ad over there? He's got to be hiding behind it. Weird. All right. I didn't hit the one below me. Don't fall down, by the way. Need to be down in here. So don't forget about this one underneath. Now he seems closer. All right. You're dead. Wow. He's throwing the heavy at me. That's good, because I'm going to need to burn this boss. When you get three out of the four network towers, I would bring your heavy up to the front door. Because you're going to get a little mini boss that spawns. You're going to want to melt him. Really fast. Wait for it. There he is. And when he spawns in, Heavy will knock him out nice and quick. Because he's going to be Arc. And we're good. Now, you will have to go get this last tower. But, good time to pick up the ammo, gather your thoughts. Because then we go down to the boss room. This is like the turtle versus the hare on the Nightfall race. This is the slow and steady version. Now, I shouldn't have any more Void Shields. So I can actually go over to Ark. Because now we're just going to have goblins. Oh, do I actually have minotaurs? I take that back. I have minotaurs, so. I'll be using delirium for all the harpies. And this is always the fun part. Because this is honestly just a game of you don't have to shoot these guys unless you need ammo, then you can kill them. I mean, yes. Silly me. Here's the lake now. Now, the one thing I will tell you, no matter who you're running this with, if you're doing this by yourself or with other people, if you can't 100% kill this guy, and it's hard to do, if you run Solar Singe and Heavyweight, I've killed him in like three shots. Um, but if you're not running the right build, don't try and kill him, because if you get him close, and then he teleports into shields, he runs around the whole thing with his head off, but he's immune the entire time. So, he's a pain in the butt. Don't overkill him, unless you can insta-kill him. So, stand on the platform, and here we go. Very much a patience race on this one, too. Alright, so usually I'll come down here, use this as cover. Pump a little bit of damage into him. Not too much, just enough to kind of tick him off. And he's going to turn around and get right behind you. I'll usually whittle him down slowly. His sniper won't be too bad. But once the shield pops up, you don't have to worry about him. Now, as I said, I'm not going for the triumph. So you're going to have some standard goblins over here first. And those are going to be your first section that you need to stand under. Now, his shots don't really miss. So wait for it to fire. And that purple fire hurts a lot. He typically won't miss. So when I say he won't miss, I actually mean that. So sometimes you'll stand in these. And usually what I'll do is try and use something as line of sight. It gets a little harder in the later stances on the other platform over there. These aren't so bad. And then always just kind of back off. If he puts the fire down, it's going to be probably on top of you. More goblins on this one. Nothing major. Looks like I did get some heavy, so that's a bonus. I can be a little more aggressive with that. Are you kidding, guys? Hello. Peek out. Thank you. So he gets annoying in snipes. If I use strafe, I might usually fly across the front. Now, even here... I didn't actually want to pick up the heavy, but I didn't have a choice. On this one, you want to be out of his line of sight, so just back up until you see it actually turn white. And just stay out of his line of sight. Wait for it to pop. And he's going to teleport over to that platform, so make sure you kind of stay ducked and hiding. Down under here. Now, the platforms will kind of change as he moves. Oh. Now, that fire is on the other side. Be careful it's actually not on you. Now, if I can hit him with a grenade, I'll take that, as it's kind of freebie damage. Shouldn't have too many more arc shields, but I know I'm going to have a couple. But I want to try and pump some damage into him with this instead. Fire does hurt. Now, his gun is in his right arm, so if you line aside his right arm, you can get some decent uh, damage in without worrying about too much. 
Now, you apparently can stagger him. Now, heavy weight's the way you burn his health down. Just don't overburn it. Now, you can get probably another shot in before his shield goes up. There you go. Now, you can do some damage to him. Just don't ever overdo it. I broke his head a little bit. So, next wave is over there. You're going to have your first Minotaur. So, this is where you are going to be okay sticking with the uh, Void. So, I said there's not too much solar, but having Void for the Minotaurs has some benefits in here. And this is why I'm on this side. You can use any of these rocks for cover if you need to shift around. Just find your Minotaur. He's always around. Watch the big boy sniping. So I get a line of sight. It's always a bit dicey in here. So big guy's down. So now you're going to have some of these quantum goblins. They will be a little more aggressive and painful, so be careful about those. All ads should be down. This part going across is not always my favorite. Just like that. Get some cover. And of course, there's always the straggler. Wait for the shot. There it is. It's not always the easiest thing to dodge. Still got tagged. So this one, if you can get the fire to actually go. It's actually a little nicer if you can pull the fire from here. It only seems to do it when I get up on the platform. So usually what it is is hang right here on the side. He's probably going to put fire. Yep. And it's usually right where I'm standing, so you got to wait. Twiddle your thumbs for a minute. Peek back here. Barely put your butt in the circle and notice I'm barely line of sighting that gun. But I am technically doing it. Now on that side, you're going to have two Minotaurs. So definitely stay ducked. Watch for the Minotaurs to spawn. They will be spawning a little last. Now, if you kill all those and throw a grenade over there, probably do all right with that. Ow. And if you really feel like you're taking some damage, come back here. Way in the back. You're this far in, you definitely don't want to lose your progress. I'll, I'll tell you that. Starting over a boss fight is a big, big bummer. So it's like, I'm okay burning sniper ammo. Now, one thing you can do is actually crouch under here. Probably not like where I just got shot, but under here, he can't attack me. And this is usually how I actually transfer sides. Wait for him to shoot. Kind of crouch. Once again, come around the corner. Now, this one's probably the hardest. You have to literally get here by a sliver. Creep until it won't actually get you. He's going to do the fire, because he always loves to do that at perfect timing. And sit here on the edge. As soon as this happens, he's going to go back towards the center when that shield drops. If I can get any damage on him, I will, but he's going to run pretty fast, too. He'll run to the back. He probably won't come up to the middle quite yet, and I wouldn't burn too much damage on him. If he comes in the middle, he's going to be a little more in your face. Now, he's not going to completely creep on top of you. So you are safe back here. It's a bit scary. But you're going to have cover shift. But you're still okay here. What you're waiting for is actually the adds to spawn. Which I'm really surprised they haven't yet. Now, at this point, you can dump damage into him if you can. So it's actually worth trying to just completely finish him off. But if you don't think you can do it and you want to pull the adds, we're going to do this the other way. So put anything you need. Arc is probably be all you're going to face because the only thing you're going to have is him and harpies. All right, so cover is going to move. He also should move. Now back here is probably your safest bet. Look for your ads to come out. Try and take those out. The fanatics are going to be a priority because those are going to be the ones rushing you. Again, watch the boss for your cover, and that's kind of an important piece. Watch both sides for adds as well, and if you got to move, you got to move. Just be nimble. But you want to keep progressing this way around the room, because this is going to be your safest position. Now, if there's any ammo out there, work on taking out the final adds and grab it. Try not to get stepped on, because that's just going to sting all sorts of a lot. Now, I potentially, with 200 bullets and delirium, could probably burn them down. But I want to show you guys the final kind of phases, depending on your ammo situation, and how this can go. So I'll tag him again. I haven't totally popped his head. As soon as his... When his head finally does go off, like, 
That is absolutely when you need to be um, ready just to go nuts. So I'll try and show you guys the final phases here with a little bit of machine gun damage. There they go. Switch. You're going to pop up here to the top. You can have some more adds. Be careful. He can get pretty close up here. And the Fanatics will be pretty... Now, he's dicey over there. He's going to be in that one side. So there's some adds. So this is about where you probably want to burn him. <laughs> you can use this thing for cover. But basically, once those adds are down, you can come over here. Wait till you're totally ready. I know I'm showing you guys the slowest boss kill possible, but there's certain points some of you guys may be out of ammo. Basically, once I pop his head is when I have to do everything. So I want to get him as close to that as possible, and then pull out my heavy and go absolutely nuts. So I'm going to go for a couple sniper shots, and then I'm going to go for the kill. As soon as his head breaks like that, go for everything you've got to finish him off. Not a lot of time here, and you got to burn him down. And there you go. And that is the Pyramidian, slow and steady. I already got my Nightfall drop for the week, so nothing really new here. This is what, you can get silicone Neroma from the strike. It's an old sniper rifle, but no big deal. So that is the Pyramidian, slow and steady wins the race, but hopefully that helps you guys working on your Nightfalls if you need them for truth. You can run this three times and it definitely should count.